and I just thought I would give it a try and I was very easily able to pull it off. I was doing it wrong. I thought I was doing it right. And you may be doing it wrong as well. So I'm gonna run some through the Bolt as well as through the Nova Plus today. And then we're gonna take them right down to the hat press and walk through that process. I'm gonna share some ideas as well as some settings, things that I've learned that might help you as well. Leatherette, today on LaserNuck. Welcome back. Let's get right to it. Got lots to talk about today. Thickness. So I have four different sheets of leatherette here. They come from three different manufacturers or suppliers. One of them comes from Canadian Engraving Supply here in Canada. Another one comes from, well, actually two of them come from Hyde Bond Canada. And this last one, which I've just recently tried out, comes from a company called Laser Hide down in the US. I believe they're in California. Either way, you'll notice that you can get them in different types of finishes or surfaces. This one's much smoother. I kind of like the smooth ones more than the old style. This guy's kind of smooth. This one's got that rough feel to it. This one here also has that kind of rough surface on it. So thickness matters. As an example, this guy here, 0.032 inches. This one is 0.062 inches. This one here is 0.067 inches. And my last one here is 0.072 inches. And each of these samples all have adhesives on the back. But thickness matters. You may want a thinner profile, whether you're putting it on a hat versus a thicker one, but you may also want a thinner profile because maybe you're putting it on, I don't know, company shirts as a logo, whether it's on the sleeve or on the chest, or you're putting it on soft hats and your leatherette needs to be a little bit thinner so that it's able to be a little more malleable or flexible on clothing versus on the top of a cap like this one. Color. Just as I've learned when running tumblers or acrylics, the laser is going to interact with different colors, sometimes differently. For example, my settings for acrylic, I got great settings, work with pretty much every color under the sun except green. I have different settings or I had to adjust settings to do green. And similarly, when running tumblers, green and orange seem to be trouble colors for me. And with leatherette, it's kind of the same. When trying to establish my settings for leatherette, came up with some really nice settings that got me some great consistent engraves on these colors but when i tried it on this color it didn't work so well cut settings work on all of them which is great but i had to adjust so that i could get a consistency across all those colors including this color when you're running patches you're definitely going to have to clean the dust off them there's always going to be some little bit of dust and you need an easy way to clean them up this doesn't work so well. And this SEP, I was actually shocked. I use this stuff a lot, whether it's stuff in the kitchen, doing repairs, uh, oven cleaning, the barbecue, etc. But when it came to the leatherette, this was probably the worst cleanser. It just did not work well. Water alone doesn't work so well. 50-50 mixture of alcohol and water works pretty good, actually. And I've been using it for a long time. Until recently, I found out that LA Awesome is now available in Canada. Might have been for a little while, but it certainly wasn't available two years ago when I started. This so far works the best, easiest at cleaning the dust or any debris off of those patches very quickly and pretty much in one, maybe two swipes. And just like so many other materials, when you're engraving leatherette, your air pressure matters. When you're engraving leatherette, you want really, really low air, like literally a whisper of air coming out of that nozzle. The more airflow you have on that engrave, the more dust or debris you're going to have to clean off afterwards. So let's grab a sheet. I'll give you my settings for both the Nova Plus and the Bolt. We'll run it through both machines, we'll clean them, and then we'll run down to the hat press. So I'm just going to use my own logo and I'm going to do two simple patches. I've got a square and I've got a round. We're going to run the square on the Bolt and I'm going to run the round one on the Nova Plus. So for the Bolt, I've got different settings for different types because I need it and I'll show you in a second why. I've created specific settings just for this hide bond saddle model. I think they call it the saddle hide. You've got 800 millimeters a second at 40 and 40% 40 power, 400 lines per inch, fill mode of course, but the key here is there's, the high air is not turned on. For my cut settings, it's pretty thick stuff. I've got 30 millimeters a second at 75% power, high and low. I have high air turned on, line mode one pass. Let's just check it. Yep, we're good. And let's burn it. 
This is just an example of why I mentioned that color matters. Usually with my regular brown or rawhide colors, this initial setting right here works perfectly. But when you run it on a different color, or in this case a lighter color, you'll notice it didn't get all the way through, not only on the cut, but it also didn't get through and give me a nice clean engrave. Let's see if these settings make a difference. We're going to run it over here, do an autofocus. And let's set our origin. Frame our job. We're good. Let's run it. I was also fooled a little bit earlier on when I was getting smaller orders for, you know, three hats, five hats, because you'll see when you run just a couple of different patches in the bolt, it looks like it's coming out clean because it is. There's virtually no dust on those patches. It just needs a quick wipe. But when you start running larger orders and you're running, you know, 20, 24 patches on a sheet, you eventually start seeing dust showing up in and around the middle of the sheet. But you have to admit, that's a beautiful result right out of the laser. Great. Get a little light on that. And there's your result. Not much to clean. Tiny squirt. other than my fingerprint comes out that clean let's run it through the Nova Plus for the Nova Plus let's just change over and go into our material library for the Nova Plus I'm going to come down to leatherette so my engrave settings are going to be at a thousand millimeters a second 30 and 30 percent power 400 lines per inch again I have not enabled high air and it's in fill mode. My cut settings, I'm at 40 millimeters a second, 60% power. I have high air turned on, I'm in line mode, one pass. Okay, let's highlight our patch and let's send it to the Nova Plus. At the Nova Plus, you'll know that this tiny little green number is your default air pressure. If your pressure falls below this preset number, it'll stop the laser from working. I'm going to calibrate first. And of course, I changed that, so I'll put it back to 0.3, which is their recommended setting. And I'm going to test both of my high and low. My low, too high. So I'm just going to adjust my needle valve. I'm going to get down more to 0.4. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Bit of a jump. My high, I'm going to turn it right up. That's looking good too. Let's autofocus, pull the file up, set our origin frame, and start the job.
and there's what you'll get right out of the laser. You'll notice there's a lot more debris or dust on there, you know, relatively speaking, than what I get out of the bolt. And I believe it's just because there's a higher low airflow that comes through this laser head. And I imagine that's because it's a different designed head. But either way, easy to clean up. Let's do it. There we go. That LA Awesome is a lot better than the alcohol and water mixture. So that'll wrap it up for the laser part of this video. Hopefully there were a few helpful hints in there. Again, color matters, even when it comes to leatherette. At least that's what I found. So when you're creating your settings in your material library, I always now try to identify the type or distributor or brand of leatherette, as well as what size lens I'm using. And when I find a difference for different types of colors, I add them in separately. That way I don't have to try to remember. Let's grab those patches and head on down to the hat press.